Okay. Now, you first of all, probably you notice that the sound is better um, in this video, and that's because I bought a microphone um, and headphone set. You know, one of those built-in um, microphones in the headphones. Here's, here, I'll show you. So, the sound will probably be uh, focused uh, better on my voice. Uh, and the reason is that, um, well, actually it was a good deal, I needed a pair of headphones, but I found out that the um, headphones that were for sale, they were more expensive actually without the microphone um, than with the microphone, and this is like a gaming headphone set, and I just needed a pair of headphones. You could buy like this like for 20 dollars, and the other ones for 50, and that was without the microphone, so I just didn't bother, and just bought it, and I thought, you know, I could use it for my videos, so um, here we go. Um, the second thing I like to point out is uh, in front of you see two cameras. One of them is a Kodak uh, Easy Share uh, C613, and the other one is a Fiji Film A303 uh, Finepix. This is the Finepix Fiji Film A303 from 2002. Takes uh, two AA batteries, as you can see. This is a fun fully functional camera, and um, I was actually planning on using this for my videos, or actually this one, believe it or not. I got this from my uh, photography professor, and it's really nice, it's a really good camera, and I was going to use it, and then I found out, while filming, that this uh, camera doesn't isn't equipped with a microphone, believe it or not. This is a silent video camera. Uh, it's a f photo camera, really, but it has a video option, but it doesn't have a sound option. And I thought first, like, maybe there's a microphone and it doesn't work, but I looked up on the internet and apparently this machine doesn't have a microphone installed at all. Now I have this one, this is a Kodak EasyShare C613. Um, this does have a microphone, you can see it here at the front. The only downside to this machine is The batteries on this drain ridiculously fast. I have a pack here. You can see that, well, one's under here, rolled under here. Two are missing. That's because they are in here. Um, for some reason, it doesn't show up. Usually, there's a little bar here saying that the battery is about to die. I've never, it's actually one of the first times I've seen this camera up without that bar. It drains the batteries within 30 seconds and, well, just regular alkaline batteries. So I'm not going to even bother using this one because my videos will just be cut off. Um, I'm just considering I actually might use this one sometimes for my silent videos. Only the sound effects of the machines will be gone then. So I might just use this for uh, examples. Uh, it takes good pictures though, it's quite sharp, but the video quality is terrible. So right now I'm using my JVC Averio uh, camera. Um, it's an HD one that I bought for... Well, I'm not going to say how much, but it was a while ago. I think it was over summer. Um, and before that, my red camera and my tape camera. I still have those, and I'm still planning on using those. Um, I have to buy a cleaning set for my film camera, for my video camera. Um, like I said, this is a Halda Star from 1955. I got this machine through a elderly couple that lives that lived in a house that's from 1934. When they moved in about 12, 13 years ago, they discovered this machine sitting in the house where they were about to move in. And um, they were actually planning on restoring it. Now, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call. They said, yeah, well, we have this machine still sitting around. It is still in quite bad shape. And uh, we're not going to bother even fixing it anymore. So if you want to have it, you can have it. So uh, I went over to the house and they had the sitting on the counter. And first, when I drove there, I didn't even ask. Uh, what kind of machine it was, if it was electric or manual, uh, I didn't even bother asking. So I was in for a total surprise and I thought like, well maybe she has like a Royal KMM or Royal HH or Smith Corona, Remington Super Ride, something like that. But no, it was a Sw Swedish mage, uh, Halda. Halda is a company um, just like Commodore for console, it is a, a company under a different name, it's a facet in this case a facet product and 
um, I have a smaller portable version of this machine actually same keys same kind of keys and some of the features are actually the same however this is a holder uh, When I got this machine, it was somewhat rusted. It had some rust on the paper bill, and it had rust here. And it had some rust underneath here. Now, the rust underneath here, there's still slightly amount, like really tiny amount. Um, and it does show up on the platen sometimes. Yeah, for instance. Um... The platen is a pain to get off. Actually, most of the panels on this machine are a pain to get off. I still haven't figured out how to get these and this one off. I have figured out how to get this one off, although it's more tricky than it looks, actually. There's two levers on this inside, but what you have to do is you have to also remove the under padding. This is actually the feet, this one single piece. My other halda also has that, or my facet also has that. Uh, you have to remove that, then you have to remove these four screws. One here, one here two here and then the whole machine just bounces in its own outer cast it's a pain to do and I rather didn't do it but I did because I had to clean the front panel because it was dirty as hell uh, put it back together well this is how you see it now there seems still some slight dirt in this machine but because of the way it's constructed it's just impossible to get it all apart as you probably have noticed the ribbon um, spools are also tiny compared to the usual spools and the, you can actually see it by the size of the space around it these are actually for what was it i'm pretty sure these are meant for either a empire uh, or was it a i forgot it is not that quite a machine it's for a small portable machine however these are the only spools that fit on this machine it came with just regular twin spool from staples and those don't fit because it has like a special fit now the ribbon spools from a royal kmm would fit if they was um if they wouldn't be so big because they're slightly bigger than this so they don't fit in this space so in order to have them fit i should have to take this off and well i didn't frankly want to do that so what i did is i found these now first they didn't fit but they had this little pin on the bottom that was straight and i bent them in both cases and now it does work as you can probably hear by the grinding noise it is catching on the wheels so I'm using that right now for uh, the spools of this machine and it, the, um, it's only half a ribbon. I bought a pack of staples for 10 bucks and this is half the amount I was on those spools and I still have the other amount so in case this one runs dry or out of ink I still have the other pack, half a pack left. Now the keys on this machine are quite dirty and it's because the ink on it is so gummed up that I can't get it off. Even with a toothbrush in a uh, wire brush it's impossible to get it off so I'm just leaving it on there uh, the type basket is rather clean I managed to clean it off there was a ton of nicotine staining in here so it was really bad um, however the paint job on this machine is still rather good real damage it's just wear and tear from use like this but the overall quality of this machine is still pretty good somebody scratched their name in at some point a Thomas Thompson, I think, because this is I made out as Thomas, but then uh, I was um, cleaning this machine with toothpaste, and some toothpaste got into some scratching in the back, and that also has a name scratched into it, and that says Thompson, not Thomas. So it's quite interesting. Um, It's missing the tag up here, so I made my own to fit. So the tabulator, it's all functional, as far as I know. Uh, it has a interesting, let me get this piece of dust. Oh, forget it. It's still not entirely clean. I'm planning on doing this as a process machine, so improve it as I go. You still see some slight dirt in there. But I can live with it. Um, the knobs aren't too clean either. I might still tend to that actually. I want my knobs to look clean. 
Uh, that's unacceptable. I'll take that off at the end of this video and clean it. Um, the stripe on this machine is still surprisingly good. The chrome, like it's at a small rust spot here, but I treat it with vinegar, so now it doesn't rust it anymore. The only heavy wear on this machine is on the back. And it is still not too bad. Uh, there's a slight indentation here. Um, you can see the, the regular wear points, the classic wear points. Paint chip there. Scratches here. Although, striping here is still significantly good. I, I'm not too sure if this has been redone at some point, but it's still good. The only way I could find was here on the side. It's a real classic office machine. It is in used shape, but it still works magnificently. And when you open it up, you feel you like when you strike your fingers over the metal, you really smell the nicotine standing. So the overall condition of this machine is good. The keys are worn. Uh, you can see the uh, nail imprints, and there's a crack in the space bar. Uh, but overall, the machine is still in very good shape. The paint's in very good shape. Uh, I might actually, I have a timer on my uh, camera right now and it's reading 11.23 and I still have that stupid YouTube time limit so I'm going to do a type sample now uh, to be sure that's uh, properly done so you can see what it looks like and I probably eventually will uh, tend to another typing sample. Platinum still needs to be cleaned out somewhat so it still has some staining but it's getting better by the time every time I put a piece of paper in. Okay, <clears throat> you probably hear I have a very raspy voice, and that's just because I'm getting over a cold. So please bear with me while I'm trying to make this as re representable as possible. I'm doing this in capitals, by the way, and I'm doing the classic, the quick brown fox jumps out lazy dog uh, sentence. So, here we go. Like I said, the ribbon ends brand new. Um, I have to clean this. It's just the rollers in there. You can see the dirt. I suspect there's still some rust uh, or something there. Let's see if I can tend to it. The camera makes it look worse than it actually is in like real life. Anyway, um. Is there anything else I could tell about this machine? Yeah, it's a fully functional machine. It has uh, one space, one and a half space, two space, two and a half space, and three spaces. So, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, a three. Nice long carriage return lever, which I've seen on many other machines. This actually looks quite a lot like a uh, Olympia SG-1 uh, with the combination of a Royal KMM really, it's a combination, like the carriage return lever reminds me of a um, Olympia SG-1 and then the shape of it reminds me of a, uh, a Royal KMM, it's rather interesting, usually on a KMM this is flat though on the front, but look at the shape of this and this. The carriage is different. It's interesting how they combined the designs of these machines and made it look like their own design, but you can see that they tried to use some of the designs of the American companies that produce these machines. They still use their own pattern, like this is typically uh, Swedish. I have the Facet TP1 uh, portable machine that also has this. It's rather interesting. Yeah, I still have to do some cleaning on this machine, like there's still some nicotine staining on these, but it's just a pain to get off, you know how that is. People that clean typewriters just like me know that nicotine is so bad. Can you imagine what it does to the inside of your lungs? Okay, my time is running out, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, bye!